In today's video, we're going to be using Barbershop de los Muertos by Murphy and McNeil. Coming right up. Hello and welcome to the Lather Hog channel where we talk about all things wet shaving. I'm your host as usual, John, and today we're using a brand new soap to the den and that is Barbershop de los Muertos. So this soap is a collaboration between Chicano Design, John Perry, and Murphy and McNeil. It is a re-release, I guess. Um, the original release was maybe a few years ago, two, three years. Um, very distinct Chicano Design artwork illustration here. And the scent, well, let's just crack her open. Some nice swirls, nice pour here. And just a fantastic scent. This one is a uh, inspired by scent, uh, Amouage Jubilation and some Roman numeral. But Jubilation is a fantastic scent that I have a decan of. It's one that I will most likely get a bottle of once said decan is done. Um, you know, sometimes in the soap, it can smell a little different where that one has some Middle Eastern spices, citrus, a lot of different things going on. Uh, this one comes off as a dark barbershop. And that's the way that I've heard, uh, I know So Sharp David has mentioned it that way. Uh, he's another big fan of this scent. Now I managed to pick up this one in the second run as the first run of this soap and splash went super quick within minutes, I believe, of, of the drop at Murphy and McNeil. Also, this is one of two uh, releases, you know, there's a Barbershop de los Muertos 2, which is based, I think it's another inspired by scent, although I'm not sure which one. This is the one I have my eye on, and it's the one that I'm really glad came back. So really looking forward to seeing how this scent opens up, to see how the scent is in the aftershave, and very much so, this is a first impressions video. So before we get to the shave, let me show you what other gear we'll be using today. All right, so first off the razor, we're going with the Rockwell 6S. Uh, today we're going with the R5 plate. I just confirmed that, yes, the R5 plate on the 6S here. It's loaded with a uh, Wizabet Super Iridium, and this one's on loan from my buddy Gerard, who I co-host the Ladder Talk podcast with. For the brush, we're going with the Decoration Grooming Fay, and this is loaded with a B9A knot, so uh, 28 millimeter, really fantastic knot, fantastic brush. Uh, it's a little hard to pick up in the colors, but there's a lot of subtleties. I really dig it. And of course, for software, Barbershop de los Muertos, both the soap and the matching splash here. Alright, so upon lathering from the tub, the scent really opened up and much more closely resembled the, the, the fragrance that is based on Amouage Jubilation. Sorry, I had a bit of a brain fart there. You'll have, also have to excuse uh, there's someone doing wood, woodworking, like a bandsaw or something's going on in the garage, in the, not garage in the driveway next door to me. So you might hear that a little bit for this video. So anyway, Amouage Jubilation, that that scent that I, I love so much, really comes out once, you know, once lathered. Another thing to note is that um, for the soap base, this is probably Murphy and McNeil's um, best soap base that they offer, which is uh, the Kodiak base. And that one's kind of special you know, secret sauce is bare tallow. And in my previous uses of it, um, the, you know, in its premier soap, Nantahala, it's just a really, uh, really fantastic soap base. I know that the bare tallow is a little hard to source so it's not that every release you know, uh, gets the Kodiak base. If you know if that intrigues you at all, I'll just keep an eye out and sign up for the email newsletter 
And they'll usually, you know, make it really clear which base it's in. It's not something that's around all the time. Uh, that's the important thing to note, but it does come with enough, it shows up with enough regularity that it's worth covering and talking about. All right, so I did have to go back and pick up a little bit more soap. I think I always underestimate um, how much, how much, how long I need to load the declaration knot for. It's 28 millimeters. As I would say my sweet spot typically is 20, 26. The other tricky thing is um, I'm really seeing the beard, you know, um, poking through the lather. So it's hard to tell, is it thin or is it just that I have, I have five days worth of beard growth. So I'm not looking for pasty here. So it seems, it seems good enough for me to, to go with, so. We'll run with it. So here we go in. Again, it's the Rockwell success on the R5 plate, mowing down five days worth of beard hair. Before I forget, let me put up the official set notes for Barbershop de los Muertos. You know, I definitely do get something that's reminding me of, you know, that Barbershop vibe. Not something that I would pick up on from the, you know, from the fragrance itself, but I'll have to go back because I'm definitely getting that. And it's also, I would say, a fair representation of the cologne it's inspired by. I got in the mail uh, the set just before Thanksgiving, I believe. And just to be completely honest, it's been a bit of a struggle to find, you know, time to shave and record. So I kind of found myself in a situation where it's four, five days have passed. And kind of the thing that falls by the wayside after putting the kids to sleep is, you know, is the shave, is recording the shave instead of just watching some TV, catching up on some shows, which in itself, bring, you know, bring some level of relaxation, comfort, escape. But it's one thing to push through, make sure to, to stay in touch with you guys. All right. So the R5 is having no problem mowing down this hair. I honestly probably could have gone for the R6 plate. Even at its most aggressive or efficient setting, I don't find the Rockwell to be an overly harsh razor by any means. I'm just loving the weight of this stainless steel. But going back to what I was saying before, having that motivation, you know, it, it kind of comes and goes. But it's always nice when, uh, when the scent component delivers, and that's definitely the case with Barbershop de los Muertos. It was a scent I was very, um, very much anticipating uh, in this set, and I'm really enjoying it. I didn't mention that this was called like a darker barber shop, but kind of the more I use it, I would say it's kind of a more spiced barber shop. More spiced, more complex. I 
I think this is a. Uh, I don't know, this is pretty easy to like. As far as like, I think it's mass appealing. I don't think there's anything here that's too weird. Um, it's unique for sure, but. I feel like this will be a winner for most wet shavers out there. Again, there's some bandsaw or something going on outside. Just think of it as some extra white noise for today's video. Now, before I forget, some kind of housekeeping items. Uh, this past week saw the release of a new Lather Talk podcast episode. Um, you can catch that here on YouTube or on your favorite podcast provider, as I always say. Uh, I had a pleasure to talk to uh, Nate and Mel from BBS Live. Really fun guys. BBS Live is a Instagram live show um, that happens every other week, typically on Thursdays at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> That's all the United States time zones, I believe. Oh, mountain time. I forgot mountain time, I'm sorry. Mountain time falls somewhere between Central and Pacific. But those guys, such positive energy and generosity from those guys. And one thing that I am, I'm gonna say it so that I commit to this, but come January 4th to kick off the new year and possibly a little bit before then, I'm gonna commit to having, uh, to the street razor shaving again. It was something I took a break on. Um, I was in some frustrations with it, but I just didn't have the time to dedicate um, to it on top of wanting to review new software, um, even some other razors. Uh, I kind of had to put that to the side because uh, I just wasn't being consistent enough with it. But I think just for, you know, maybe not 30, 30 days, it'll take long, longer than that, but 30 shaves. Um, or just as long as, you know, at least 30 shaves, I should say. Um, we'll do those straight razor shaves for YouTube, maybe we'll do some lives on, on Instagram, but I'll be recommitting to that. Something I do want to, you know, give a solid try uh, in learning. I will say I was also inspired to re-up on that because Nate from BBS Live, as well as um, another buddy, Sefferton Shaves, both gone to straight razors recently. Uh, their enthusiasm for it uh, is has been quite infectious, and I think it might give me that little boost, that motivation that I was looking for. Um, and I, you know, pick up a new skill, a new way to shave. So expect to see that, you guys. You know, <laughs> if you want to bug me about it in the comments, you can say, well, you know, where is where when is the next straight razor shave? Feel free to do so. I do I, I do appreciate your feedback, your input, and all that good stuff. Um, the shave is all set. And that went down no problem. You know, two and a half passes, per usual for me. This aftershave here for Barbershop de los Muertos has a cool, I, I think that's a different cap. So, yeah, pretty neat. Let's give this a good shake. I mentioned before about going back to the tub for more soap. I, I have come to the conclusion that uh, 28 millimeters, especially something as densely packed as this Declaration Knot. I just personally, I still am learning to lather with it, believe it or not. Um, like a 24, 26 millimeter synthetic, I am much happier. I have much more consistent results. And I don't know, when, when something like that happens, it makes me wonder, should I just use that same brush or, you know, use 28 millimeter brushes for a few shaves in a row? That might be worthwhile, but I'll straight up say um, they tend to be a little, those lathers tend to be a little, little thinner. I gotta load more, sometimes I gotta press in more. It's hard to say because softer soaps, you don't really need to press in that much, otherwise you'll pick up too much. And for the firmer soaps, you don't pick up enough if you don't 
apply enough pressure. So that's something else I'm hoping to be working on these next few shaves. Gotta have goals. You know, another thing to push forward. The set here, fantastic. Really, really enjoyable. It, it was a great way to really cap off, I think, just a really kind of no-nonsense, enjoyable shave. As always, guys, I want to hear from you. Um, got two questions for you today. Uh, for those of you who have used Barbershop de los Muertos, one or two, let me know what your opinion is on the scent, the performance, you like it, hate it, whatever it be, let me know in the comments below. Also, for those who kind of need that, you know, carrot dangling in front of you to continue the chase, to continue pressing forward, let me know, how do you find your motivation? Uh, I've spoken before my love of food. I know sometimes having a special meal, cooking a special meal, ordering it out, so sometimes that's enough to kind of press forward uh, through a hard day, through a harder week. Uh, so I'd love to hear from you. What are the things that um, you have to kind of push forward, go through any roadblocks that are in the way and to maintain a positive attitude? Again, I'd love to hear from you, what do you have to say? So please drop me a line in the comments below. With all that being said, that brings us to the end of today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Your support, your viewership, I appreciate it. Um, it's what keeps me going. So, you know, uh, I don't discount the time you've taken out to join me today. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Take care.